Let's begin this process by just taking a look at the ZBrush interface and kind of talk about how ZBrush lays things out. So let's open up a blank ZBrush scene here. So the first thing you'll notice is this large area in the center with a gradient in the back. This is our canvas. So think of this as kind of where your 3D objects are going to live. Now they're going to be dealt with a little bit differently than you would in uh, a 3D application like Maya or 3ds Max or something like that. And we'll talk about how ZBrush works with geometry as we go through this process. Up at the top, you'll see a number of menus that you can select from. And then all the way around this canvas, you'll see there are a number of different things that we can do here. Up at the top, this, these are going to be very important settings for us as we go through and paint and sculpt. So we've got settings for things like, are we going to, to add color? How much color? Are we going to, to pull out material as we sculpt? Are we going to push it in instead? How much, how intense is that going to be? And then also things like the brush size or the draw size, as ZBrush calls it. And then sort of a fall off. Um, that we call the focal shift. And these change how our brush looks. You can see as I move my cursor around, the brush size here will change based on our draw size. And then that inner ring will change based on our focal shift. Okay, we have some buttons over here on the right hand side, which will uh, kind of help us frame up our objects and we can turn on grids and things like that to better see our objects in our canvas. Over to the left hand side, this is going to be a really important area because this is going to determine how the strokes are laid down, what is actually happening. So what kind of brush are we going to use? What kind of stroke? So how that brush is applied. If we have any sort of alpha or tip for the brush, if we use any sort of a color texture, and what kind of material we have in addition to the color that we're going to be painting. You can see I can go in here and select different colors. So these are all going to be very important and they're going to stay consistent no matter what we're doing. Now, you'll notice on the side there are these little sort of arrows. And if we click on these, you can see it sort of opens up and expands. And right now, you can see this material, what's called a palette, is located in the dock. So that the, the palette and the dock are two different things. If I click on this little button, you can see it goes away, but the dock remains. And the dock is just an area where we can put palettes. And we can put multiple palettes in there. Same thing on the right hand side. In this case, the tool palette, which is a very important palette in ZBrush, is located here. So we can open and close those docks. The palettes correspond exactly to our menus up at the top. So if we want to, again, add that material palette back, you can see I can open the material menu. And if I click on this button right here, it's going to move that over into the dock, just like it was before. Now you'll see if I open up the menu, that palette goes away. It only exists in one spot at a time. We can also add other palettes. So for instance, I could grab the lights and I could add that. So in this dock, and I can move up and down, we have multiple palettes or menus. So it's just a different way of accessing things. And the ZBrush interface is actually very customizable, but we're going to keep it uh, default just so that everything's clear. We know where everything is um, and it's just going to make it a little bit easier for us as we go through this process. Now, as I said, the tool palette or menu is going to be the same thing here. Okay, that's going to be a really important part in working with objects in ZBrush. This is where we're going to save out our objects, bring in our objects, work with the objects that we want to create. So you can see here there's this large tool icon. If we click on that, you can see we get the choice to bring in lots of different 3D meshes in addition to some 2.5D brushes. Now we're going to be coming at ZBrush from more of a, a 3D asset creation um, kind of perspective, but you can also use it for illustrations and things like that. Because it does have depth, but you can kind of combine things on your canvas. It's not like a 3D model where we would rotate around and, and build it for some other production. So it does have that ability. You can see that reflected here in a number of 2.5D brushes. Now the way that ZBrush works with geometry is going to be a little bit different. So in the next lesson, let's actually go through just a really quick process of what we would do to work on an asset. So we'll use something very simple, but just kind of show you that paradigm before we get into looking at each area a little bit more in depth. Okay, so in the next lesson, we'll just go through and get started with a simple run through.